Well, good afternoon, Andrew. Busy day up there at the Alaska Earthquake Center, I can imagine. Uh, we are busy. <laughs> um, first, uh, welcome. Thank you so much for taking some time today. Uh, describe quickly what the Alaska Earthquake Center is and what you are as the state seismologist. Well, real simple. The Alaska Earthquake Center was established by the Alaska legislature specifically to help the state uh, prepare, monitor, and engage with the public on for events like today. And you study earthquakes all of the time. They're happening all of the time. How many earthquakes happen in Alaska every day? You know, we pick up something large enough to be reported about every 12 minutes or so. But remember, most of those, the vast majority of those are teeny tiny little you know, pops and creeks in the earth, if you will. And But this was, this was more of a, uh, how would you describe it? <laughs> well, this is the most significant earthquake in Anchorage since 1964. I think I think it's safe to say that. It's uh, not measured in magnitude or location, but in terms of how strong the ground itself shook during this earthquake. This morning here in Fairbanks, uh, it sort of felt like my house was going back and forth like this for a long time. What are the different kind of earthquakes? So you in Fairbanks, like myself, were very far away from the epicenter. So by the time those waves get to us, when they get far away, that's exactly right. They're a long rolling motion. Sometimes people will liken that to, uh, you know, rocking on a boat or something. But that's not what folks in Wasilla and Palmer and Anchorage felt this morning. For them, they felt something that was more like, uh, you know, someone taking you by the shoulders and going, <clears throat> it was a very fast, rapid, uh, Vigorous shake, for lack of a better term. Why didn't more the buildings fall down? I, I saw pictures of roads cracked and, and a bridge that fell down. Well, Andrew, and Andrew there, there's, there's quite a bit of damage across uh, Anchorage. There are, I, mean, I think it's going to take some time before we have a full understanding. You're correct. I am not aware of large scale, you know, building collapses or whatnot, but I think it is safe to say that there are thousands of homes and, you know, businesses and buildings that were, yes, you know, so that's undoubtedly safe to say, uh, damaged in some fashion, be it, you know, a, a deck that slid down the hill, a cracked foundation, uh, gas line disconnected from the house, et cetera. That kind of stuff is absolutely, from, from everything that uh, we're seeing, quite widespread today. Um, I saw you tweet a little bit ago dis dispelling some rumors that are going on this afternoon. Can you talk a little bit about that, about predictions of a, a larger earthquake that's coming this, to be expected? Or talk a little bit about aftershocks and what that, all, what that means for people in the area. Um, what happened this morning in Anchorage was an emotionally disturbing event. A lot of people, for very good reason, were very scared. That's a that's a that's strong shaking. There was a tsunami warning uh, in effect for a while. And when that happens, I'm not a social scientist, but I know well that people want to look for uh, explanations. They want patterns. You know, what's going to happen happen next? What does this matter? Or how does this? Uh, you know, what does this mean? We see time and again with large earthquakes, not just here but elsewhere in the world, a tendency to, um, to want to project what's going to happen next. And certainly we've seen some of that today. There are um, what I can only call rumors, but you know how rumors, especially in social media and whatnot, take on a, a life of their own and whatnot. Um, there, are, there have been some, what I can only call predictions, of very specific earthquakes at specific times and whatnot that uh, have been rumored. And all of that is just completely false. There is no evidence whatsoever for any particular kind of uh, follow-on aftershock. One of the things on the uh, Alaska Earthquake Center website, it says that there could be up to 2,200 aftershocks after an event like this. How long will people be in the, affected in the area? Yeah, so uh, I, I, that's a statistic that I'm not terribly comfortable with. That's a piece of information from the U.S. Geological Survey, which is absolutely accurate. But the full statement 
reads somewhere between 20 and 2,200. So that is a very, very large um, window of uh, possibility. Undoubtedly accurate because it's so broad. I'm not, to me personally, I'm not sure that that's a meaningful uh, statement, but you, what you're getting at, your larger question, if I can infer, is what should we expect in terms of aftershocks? Fair? Yes, absolutely. Look, in the last few hours since the earthquake happened this morning, there are what we would consider to be maybe six or seven um, um, significant aftershocks. For me, that means an earthquake, maybe magnitude four and a half and above. That's kind of the limit at where we start to see real uh, human impacts. We've had six or seven of those. Um, they're going to continue. Um, I don't know how many more, but there will be some more of those. They will likely decrease in how often they happen. Uh, and they will become less and less and slowly over the next few weeks, next couple of months, they will kind of drift into the background and people will kind of stop forgetting that there are, that these are aftershocks. But I can, but I'm almost certain that earthquakes right in and around where this one happened today, aftershocks from it are something that we will be recording you know, years from now. Was there anything They'll particularly- slowly trail off into the background. So, sorry. No, no, no. Sorry. I'll keep on going with that, please. I think that's really what people want to know. Like, should they be, should they be getting their uh, emergency preparedness kits restocked up? Should they be really going and preparing for bigger things like this to happen? Or is it, like you said, just sort of a fade in the background? Well, so the aftershocks from this earthquake will slowly, with time, for, for lack of a better term, fade into the background. Um, there is always, any time, there is a large earthquake, right? We have taken today a piece of the earth and moved it you know, into a, a somewhat different place. Any time you mess around with the earth like that, there is always a very small potential for you know, an earthquake of similar uh, or larger size. It's a very low probability, but it's non-zero. Um, that aside, there can be earthquakes tomorrow from a completely unrelated or different source. So as an Alaskan, I mean, I, without question, uh, today's earthquake should be taken as a reminder, not that we needed it, but a reminder that we live in a very seismically active area and we need to be prepared, plain and simple. Is, the, is it the... Is it true to say that we're due for an earthquake? Can it build up like it just the, the pressure builds up and it's like it's been 50 years, it's time for an earthquake to happen? Or do we not quite understand why they happen yet? Is that where part of your work is? Well, well, we do understand in the big picture why earthquakes happen. And you've actually explained it reasonably well, right? Two parts of the earth that are supposed to move past one another lock up, get stuck. There, there, there's friction there. And, you know, pressure or stress, if you will, builds up. It continues to build up until it ruptures. We we refer to that as the earthquake cycle, um, and that is always happening. Um, and that's happening in many different ways in different places. We saw it uh, a decade or so ago after enough pressure had built up on the Denali Fault in 2002. We had a very significant magnitude 7.9 earthquake felt strongly in Fairbanks, Anchorage, pretty much across the state. Um, that was several hundred years of pent up stress being released. Um, that process is going on in lots of different places, not just where that earthquake happened today. Um, so I think I, I, I segued a little bit from the original question there, but... Um, I guess part of, the, part of the question is, can you look at the stress faults and say, this place, there's a risk of it happening here, or is that even an effective thing to try to predict? Actually, the U.S. Geological Survey, using data, uh, you know, produced here, um, has a what, what's referred to as an earthquake hazard map, and it lists specifically the probabilities as a function of where you are of feeling uh, of earthquake impacts. Instead of being a magnitude, you know, five or six or seven here or there, or wherever. It's done by ground shaking. So what is the probability that I will experience strong ground shaking in the next 
50 years or 500 years. And that's information that's available. Uh, a quick web search on uh, seismic hazard would turn that up and uh, that's mapped out differently for different parts of the state. Uh, so there's a, a mathematical formula that goes to figuring out the magnitude of the earthquake just as a, as a math, a number. But yep. do, is that the only way to measure it? Is there a measure of how close it is to a population center that also goes into affecting how you gauge it as being a serious event versus something that is just a mathematically interesting event? Well, I think you raised two really good issues there. One is the question of what makes an earthquake significant. Nobody is going to question that today's earthquake is hugely significant, one of the most significant earthquakes in many, many, many years in this state. And it's significant not actually because it was magnitude 7.0. We have had a number of those in the last few years. We've actually had bigger earthquakes, but they did not happen near one of our population centers. Today's did. So you're absolutely right that uh, uh, mathematically, population may not exactly figure into how we measure the size or severity of an earthquake, but um, to, to real human beings, that matters everything. The other piece of that, and the reason, that, the, the second piece I think that's interesting here is, we touched on this a minute before, what people really care about, and sometimes they don't know this, but what they really care about is not how big was the earthquake, but rather how much did I shake? You know, what scared people today, you know, what, what injured people today is not the fact that there was a magnitude seven earthquake somewhere. It's that the ground under them, in their building, under their feet, shook at, you know, a significant portion of the acceleration of gravity. That's, you know, it's the ground shaking that really matters. It's, it's scary. My sister lives uh, and works in Anchorage and she calls, she was, uh, surprised and scared. I've seen many videos and pictures of people who are just the 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 human. The the fear was significant today. Definitely, definitely was. Um, I've, I've spoken today. Ahead. I've spoken today to colleagues, earthquake professionals, who are well acquainted with you know, earthquakes, their impacts, what they do. Uh, who, like you just said, um, were quite scared today. Some of them have homes that were damaged. It was it was a, a big deal. I just want to touch on a couple of quick things, and I know you've got some other stuff to do this afternoon. There was a tsunami warning for a while. Um, can you talk to me about the tsunami warning? And then it was canceled after a little while. What was the what what, what sort of was the tsunami that came up from this earthquake? So the so NOAA's uh, National Tsunami Warning Center uh, did issue a tsunami uh, warning uh, this morning, uh, effective for a, a large swath of the coastline. Um, that tsunami did not materialize in a particularly uh, significant way. That was canceled shortly thereafter. Um, I don't know a whole lot at this point about the decision making that went into that, how and why and whatnot, but I would stress that they are, they being uh, NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, are the responsible agency in this country for, they are the definitive source of tsunami warning information. Great. Um, uh, what can people do? What's the best thing to do uh, after an earthquake happens? Um, I would spend time today uh, being thankful, thankful for what didn't happen. Um, this is this is a reminder, a deep reminder of the, you know, the nature of the state we live in. Uh, earthquakes are part of what makes this place uh, what it is. It, our dramatic coastlines, our gorgeous mountains, et cetera, all in some way come from you know the dynamic changing Earth. Um, and events like today kind of remind us of that. But they also remind us. Uh, again, not that we necessarily need frequent reminders, but of what can happen. There were a lot of buildings today that were maybe lightly injured, in, or damaged, but uh, could have been worse. And there's definitely a, a could have been worse uh, moral to today's events. I don't think we need to pass around a message, quite frankly, because anybody who felt the strong shaking this morning has 
a, more of a reminder, more of a message than we will ever be able to put out as a public service announcement. Thank you so much for taking some time to talk with us today. Um, if there's any questions that have come up in the chat, I'll try to forward them to you and get them answered. If there's some stuff that you can talk about with. I know you've got a lot more going on this afternoon. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Michael, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, bye.